Dead America, Tales of the First Month, The Scout. Day Zero Plus Eighteen, Rural Oklahoma. Grady killed the engine of his dirt bike, its low rumble fading into an eerie silence as he surveyed the large farmhouse before him. The sun cast long shadows over the cracked and weathered exterior, while a handful of zombies stumbled aimlessly through the tall grass. Looks like we got some company, Grady said, pressing the talk button on the walkie-talkie clipped to his belt. More of those things. Kendrick's voice crackled back, the concern evident in his tone. Grady, maybe we should try somewhere else. You don't have to go in there. Aw, oh, come on, Kendrick, Grady smirked, tapping his fingers against his thigh. Where's your sense of adventure? Dead and buried, just like those things should be, Kendrick retorted. Ignoring Kendrick's protests, Grady swung his leg off the bike and pulled an aluminum baseball bat from his bag. The gleaming weapon caught the sunlight as he casually strolled toward the house, each step deliberate and calculated. He could almost feel Kendrick's worry buzzing through the airwaves. Keep an eye out for me, would you? Grady said, his eyes darting between the shambling corpses. Damn it, Grady. Kendrick sighed. But Grady had already tuned him out, focusing instead on the task at hand. A zombie with matted hair and tattered clothes lurched toward him, its milky eyes fixated on him. Grady tightened his grip on the bat, his knuckles white as he swung it with precision, connecting squarely with the creature's temple. A sickening crunch echoed through the air as the zombie crumpled to the ground, its head caved in. Hey, Kendrick, Grady said his voice dripping with sarcasm. Well, they know I'm here, so might as well go through with it. Grady, you're a damn fool, Kendrick muttered. Maybe, Grady admitted, his heartbeat quickening as adrenaline coursed through his veins. But I'm a damn fool who's gonna get us some supplies. As the other zombies turned their attention toward him, Grady's smile grew. It was a twisted dance of life and death, and he couldn't help but embrace the thrill of it all. Grady's bat swung through the air like a whirlwind, connecting with skull after skull. He danced around the undead, striking them down with brutal efficiency. Each impact sent a shiver up his spine, a twisted sense of satisfaction coursing through him. Jesus, Grady, you're like some demented ballerina. Kendrick's voice crackled in his earpiece. Hey, I make this look good, Grady responded, knocking another zombie to the ground with a well-timed kick. A groaning corpse reached for him, but he sidestepped, smashing its head with his bat. The silence that followed was eerie, broken only by Grady's heavy breathing. Exterior's clear, he announced, wiping sweat from his brow. The adrenaline still pumped through his veins, fueling his movements as he stepped cautiously into the farmhouse. Be careful, man, Kendrick warned, his voice strained with concern. Always am, Grady replied, though his pounding heart betrayed his bravado. He moved slowly towards the front door, getting inside and listening intently for any telltale signs of danger. As he neared the back of the house, a faint scratching sound reached his ears. He tensed, gripping his bat tighter. Got some more company, he whispered, inching toward the noise. Just as he rounded a corner, a snarling zombie lunged at him from the floor, its fingers digging into his leg. Grady cursed, swinging his bat wildly to fend off the creature. Grady. What's going on? Kendrick's panicked voice filled his ear, but Grady had no time to respond. Another zombie emerged from the shadows, drawn by the commotion. It shuffled toward him, its jaw snapping hungrily. Damn it, Grady muttered, kicking the first zombie away. He scrambled backward, searching desperately for anything to use as a weapon. His hand connected with a heavy doorstop, and he hurled it at the approaching creature. The makeshift projectile struck its head with a sickening crunch, dropping it to the ground. Using the momentary respite, Grady finished off the first attacker with a vicious stomp. He panted, his heart racing from the close call. Grady, you still with me? Kendrick's voice was frantic now. Still here, Grady reassured him, his voice a little shaky. Just had some unexpected guests. I'll be more careful. Please, Kendrick pleaded, the fear in his voice palpable. Promise, Grady replied, his resolve stealing once more. The farmhouse loomed around him, dark and foreboding, but he refused to let fear control him. Survival always came first for him, for Kendrick, and for the rest of their group. And he would do whatever it took to ensure that survival. Grady took a deep breath, his chest heaving as he tried to slow his racing heart. The adrenaline in his veins threatened to consume him, but he couldn't afford to lose focus now. 
He wiped the sweat from his brow and raised the walkie-talkie to his lips. Kendrick, I'm fine, Grady said, injecting false confidence into his voice. Just had a little run-in, nothing I couldn't handle. Jesus, Grady, Kendrick's voice crackled through the speaker, a mixture of relief and exasperation. You nearly gave me a heart attack. You better not be taking any more unnecessary risks. Relax, man, Grady replied, smirking despite the lingering fear that clawed at the edges of his mind. I've got this. With renewed determination, Grady continued exploring the farmhouse. Each creaking floorboard and shadowy corner sent shivers down his spine, but he refused to let the darkness swallow him whole. They needed supplies, and if this house held even a scrap of food, it was worth the risk. The kitchen came into view, and Grady's heart sank. It looked like a tornado had ripped through the room, cupboard doors hung open on broken hinges. Shattered dishes littered the floor, and every last can, box, and bag had been torn apart by desperate hands. He clenched his fists in frustration, imagining the slim pickings waiting for their group back at camp. Damn it, Kendrick, Grady spat, surveying the wreckage. This place is bone dry. Someone beat us to it. Damn. Kendrick's disappointment echoed through the walkie-talkie. What now? Let me check the map, Grady muttered pulling the tattered paper from his backpack. He spread it out on the kitchen counter, his fingers tracing over the myriad of X marks that dotted the landscape. Each one represented a failed mission, a desperate hope dashed against the unforgiving reality of their new world. Clinton, Grady said suddenly, tapping on a small town to the east. That's where we need to go. I know it's bigger than we're used to, but we don't have a choice. We have too many mouths to feed and not enough food to go around. Clinton? Kendrick hesitated, his voice wavering with uncertainty. That's risky, Grady. You sure about this? Positive, Grady replied, steeling himself for the challenge ahead. It's either that or we learn how to barbecue human. Of course, with you being a big boy, I imagine you wouldn't be in favor of that particular survival tactic. Kendrick muttered some curses under his breath before composing himself for a proper response. All right, Kendrick conceded the weight of their desperation heavy in his voice. Just promise me you'll be careful. Always am, Grady said, his grin returning as he folded the map and tucked it back into his bag. He could feel the fire of determination igniting within him once more, ready to face whatever horrors awaited him in Clinton. And in that moment, he knew he would do whatever it took to ensure the survival of his people, even if it meant staring death itself in the eye. Grady mounted his dirt bike, the engine roaring to life beneath him as he kicked it into gear. The wind whipped through his hair as he sped along the open field, a direct path to Clinton laid out before him. As the miles flew by, he couldn't help but think back to his previous life. When riding like this was just for fun, an adrenaline rush to chase away the boredom of everyday existence. Man, how things have changed, Grady muttered to himself, the irony bitter on his tongue as he pushed his bike faster the horizon stretching out endlessly before him. The outskirts of Clinton soon appeared in the distance, and with a deep breath, Grady forced himself to snap back to reality. He slowed the bike and pulled out the binoculars from his bag, scanning the edge of town. Amidst the residential area, a few zombies wandered aimlessly, their decaying flesh a stark reminder of the world he now lived in. All right, Kendrick, Grady spoke into the walkie-talkie. I'm here. It's pretty quiet. Few shamblers scattered around, nothing I can't handle. Good, just remember, be cautious and stay sharp, Kendrick replied, his concern evident in the static-filled transmission. Always, my friend, Grady assured him before spotting a house with a large wooden fence enclosing the backyard. This would be his target. With no zombies within fifty yards, he revved the engine and rode up to the fence. In one swift motion, he used the back of the bike to hoist himself over and landed smoothly in the yard adrenaline pumping through his veins. Okay, I'm in, he whispered into the walkie-talkie, his eyes darting around, always on high alert. Survival had become his sole purpose, and Grady wouldn't let anything living or undead stand in his way. Grady crept through the back door of the house, bat in hand, every muscle tense and ready. Shadows clung to the corners, but he could see well enough. The first floor was devoid of life or unlife. Kendrick, this place is empty, Grady whispered into the walkie-talkie. Kitchen's been picked clean, too. Damn, Kendrick responded. 
All right. What about finding a phone book? Might help us locate a grocery store. Good idea. Grady rummaged through drawers until he found an old, yellowing phone book. He scanned the pages, stopping at the grocery section. Got it. There's one on 10th Street. Great. Now find out where you are. Grady glanced around and spotted a stack of mail on a dusty table. He sifted through the envelopes and found one with an address. Looks like I'm on 1st Street. Got a bit of a journey ahead. Stay sharp, Grady. We need those supplies. Roger that. Looking out the front window, Grady saw that the zombies were few and far between, giving him room to maneuver. He stepped cautiously outside, bat at the ready. As he moved through the neighborhood, hopping fences and avoiding the undead, he couldn't help but reminisce. Hey, Kendrick, you remember the time I got into that bar brawl over that brunette? Grady asked, taking down a zombie with a swift swing of his bat. Yeah, man, you always did have a way with the ladies. Not that her boyfriend was particularly impressed with your smooth talking technique, Kendrick replied, amusement in his voice. I always thought game recognizes game, Grady said as he shoved a zombie to the ground before continuing on his path. Pretty sure that only works when you're outside the given situation. Not quite as amusing of a situation where you're left on the sidelines. Ha ha, fair enough. Okay, your turn. Tell me something from before all this madness. Grady said, dispatching another zombie as he continued his trek. All right, um, scoring that winning touchdown in the high school playoffs. Best moment of my life, Kendrick shared. A hint of nostalgia in his voice. That's it, Grady said, an unimpressed tone in his voice. What do you mean, that's it? Do you have any idea how big of a deal that is in these parts, Kendrick said, almost offended by the lack of respect. I'm so glad I grew up in the big city, Grady said before pausing to dispatch another shambling creature. Um, buddy, hate to break it to you, but I don't think Stillwater counts as the big city. Kendrick says with a hint of sarcasm in his voice. Still bigger than yours, Grady replied, a small smile on his lips. At least you gotta say that line to me once, Kendrick says as he bursts into laughter. It takes a moment for the joke to hit Grady, but when it does, all he does is shake his head, letting his friend have his moment. What? No comeback to that one? Kendrick mocked. Getting close to the business district. Need to focus a bit, Grady replied. Just be safe, Kendrick said in a serious tone, concern filling his voice. Agreed. I'll keep you updated. And with that, Grady continued his journey through the eerily quiet town, determined to make it to 10th Street, where the promise of much-needed supplies awaited. Grady's heart pounded in his chest as he crouched behind the bushes beside a house on 6th Street. He could feel the sweat trickling down his back, adrenaline coursing through his veins. Peeking out from his hiding spot, he noticed an open back door to one of the businesses up ahead. A few dozen zombies milled around the building, but there seemed to be a clear path to the entrance. Kendrick, Grady whispered into the walkie-talkie. I see an open door to one of these shops. Might be worth checking out. Is it clear? Kendrick asked. Just a few dozen. Nothing I can't handle, Grady replied wincing in anticipation of Kendrick's reply. Are you nuts? Kendrick hissed back. It's too risky, man. Look, Grady snapped, frustration boiling over. You're not here. I am, and I'm going. Grady, don't. But Grady had already made up his mind. Taking a deep breath, he burst from cover, adrenaline fueling his every step. He sprinted towards the door, mowing down zombies in his path. The noise drew more creatures in his direction, their moans echoing through the empty streets. Stay the hell back, Grady growled, swinging his bat with lethal precision. He took out one zombie, then another, trying to clear a path. As he reached the door, the undead began to swarm him, their cold, rotting fingers grasping at his clothes. Damn it, Grady cursed, struggling to close the door against the horde. When it became obvious he couldn't secure the entrance, he abandoned the effort and dashed deeper into the small clothing store. Hangers clattered to the ground. Abandoned garments trampled underfoot as he raced for the front door. Through the display window, Grady spotted several dozen zombies outside, lurching aimlessly in the street. He knew he didn't have much time. His eyes darted around, searching for an escape route, and finally settled on another business across the street. A surge of determination flooded his veins. Going for it, he yelled into the walkie-talkie, not waiting for Kendrick's response. With a deep breath, he sprinted back out into the chaos, bat swinging wildly as he charged towards his new target. 
Grady unlocked and threw open the front door, the cold metal handle slipping from his sweaty grip. The moment he stepped out into the street, a snarling zombie lunged for him, its rotten teeth mere inches from his face. Grady swung his bat with all his strength, connecting with the creature's skull. The impact echoed through the air, drawing more undead towards him. Damn it, Grady muttered under his breath, heart thundering like a stampede in his ears. He caught sight of another building across the street, a former restaurant, its glass window reflecting the chaos unfolding around him. Without thinking, Grady hurled his bat at the window, shattering the glass and leaving a jagged opening just large enough for him to dive through. Here goes nothing, he whispered to himself, adrenaline pumping through his veins as he sprinted across the street, zombies closing in on either side of him. He leaped through the broken window, ignoring the sting of glass shards slicing into his skin as he hit the ground hard, the wind knocked out of him. Gasping for breath, Grady forced himself to his feet, grabbing his trusty bat as he surveyed the abandoned restaurant. The tables and chairs were stacked against the walls, leaving a barren expanse of dusty floor. Outside, zombie hands clawed at the locked front door, their groans and moans filling his ears like a sinister symphony. Kendrick, Grady panted into the walkie-talkie. I made it. I'm inside that restaurant across the street. It's secure. For now. Grady, you're insane? Kendrick's voice crackled through the speaker, a mix of relief and frustration. You could have gotten yourself killed. Wasn't planning on dying today, Grady replied, smirking despite the situation. He peered out through a gap in the stacked chairs, watching the undead claw at the door their lifeless eyes hungry for human flesh. I've still got some fight left in me. Keep that fight going, Grady, Kendrick said, his voice tinged with concern. We need you to get back here in one piece. Don't take any unnecessary risks. Roger that, Grady responded, determination settling in his chest. He knew his time was running out, but he'd be damned if he didn't put up one hell of a fight first. With bat in hand and survival on his mind, Grady prepared for whatever lay ahead ready to face the horrors of the zombie-infested world. Grady, are you sure you're okay? Kendrick's voice emerged from the walkie-talkie, filled with worry. You've already been through a lot today. I'm good, man, Grady reassured him, glancing at the secure front door of the former restaurant. Just a few more blocks to go, and I'll check out that grocery store. Maybe you should get to the roof and scope things out first, Kendrick suggested. Take a break. Call it a day. Can't do that. Grady replied, his eyes narrowing. He gripped the bat tighter, feeling the weight of responsibility for his group of survivors. If the store's empty, we'd be risking too much sending others in. I need to see for myself. Fine, but be careful, Kendrick conceded reluctantly. Always am, Grady answered, though his recent actions might argue otherwise. He made his way to the back door of the restaurant, slowly cracking it open. To his relief, the alley was devoid of any undead threats. Taking a deep breath, he stepped outside and crept cautiously to the edge of the buildings. The road leading to the grocery store appeared mostly clear, as the noise from his earlier scuffle had drawn the zombies away. All right, Kendrick, Grady whispered into the walkie-talkie as he surveyed the street. I'm going for it. Be careful, Grady, came Kendrick's response. With adrenaline pumping through his veins, Grady began moving up the street, bat at the ready. The air was thick with tension each step echoing in his ears like a death knell. He stayed vigilant, prepared to strike down any zombie that crossed his path. As he ventured deeper into the desolate, post-apocalyptic landscape, Grady couldn't help but feel the weight of the world bearing down on him. He knew that their chances of survival were slim, but he refused to give up. For himself, for Kendrick, and for the others who depended on him. And with each step closer to the grocery store, he hoped against hope that he might find some means of salvation within its walls. A flicker of hope ignited within Grady as the grocery store finally came into view. He clenched his jaw, dispatching a couple more zombies that dared to cross his path with swift, ruthless blows from his bat. Desperate for a moment's respite, he darted behind a row of parked cars in the strip mall's parking lot. Kendrick, Grady whispered into the walkie-talkie. I've got eyes on the store. Tell me what you see, man, Kendrick replied, his voice tense with anticipation. Grady pulled out his binoculars and scanned the grocery store's exterior. The front doors were locked up tight, 
and it appeared as though there were minor fortifications behind the glass. He frowned, considering the implications. Looks like someone's been here before us, Grady said. The place is locked up and there are some sort of reinforcements inside. Could be people holed up in there or maybe just owners trying to protect their business. Either way, it's risky, Kendrick warned. Are you sure you want to go through with this? Grady's eyes narrowed as he took note of the couple dozen zombies shuffling aimlessly around the parking lot. Among them lay a few corpses, but it was impossible to determine how long they'd been there. He sighed, knowing full well that going back empty-handed wasn't an option. Bad idea or not, we need those supplies, Grady muttered, determination burning in his chest. I'm making a play for the store. Be careful, Grady, Kendrick cautioned. You know I can't lose you, too. Not after everything we've been through. I know, man, Grady replied, his voice softening for a moment. I'll do my best. With one last deep breath, Grady steeled himself for the imminent confrontation. He gripped his bat, tensed his muscles, and prepared to face whatever horrors awaited him in that forsaken grocery store. There was no turning back now. It was a matter of survival, and Grady refused to let his friends down. Grady steeled his nerves as he prepared to make a run for the grocery store. He knew it was risky, but his friends were counting on him, and he refused to let them down. With a quick, silent prayer, Grady broke from cover and sprinted across the parking lot. Thirty yards in, a gunshot echoed through the air, and a burning pain tore through Grady's side. He stumbled, falling to the cold asphalt as the bullet ripped through his gut. Panic flooded his system as he clutched at the wound, blood seeping between his fingers. Damn it, he hissed, scanning the area for the shooter. His heart pounded in his chest, drowning out all other sounds, but he knew he had to focus. The zombies shambled closer, their rotting flesh and gaping wounds a sickening reminder of the fate that awaited him if he didn't act fast. Gritting his teeth against the pain, Grady forced himself back onto his feet. He couldn't afford to go down now, not when so much was at stake. Each step back towards the row of cars was agony, but he pushed through it, using his elbows to shove the encroaching undead aside. His trusty bat was useless now. He simply didn't have the strength left to swing it. Come on, come on, he muttered, desperation gnawing at him as he tried one car door handle after another. Finally, mercifully, one gave way and he practically fell into the vehicle. With a grunt of effort, he slammed the door shut and locked it behind him, his breath coming in ragged gasps. Kendrick, he panted into the walkie-talkie, struggling to keep his voice steady. I'm hit. I don't know who, but there's a shooter. Grady, no. Kendrick's voice crackled with fear. Stay put. I'm coming to get you. Too late, Grady choked out, watching the zombies press against the car windows, their hunger evident in their dead eyes. I'm done for, man. Just promise me you'll get that food. Grady, don't talk like that, Kendrick insisted, his voice breaking. We'll find a way. Survival, Kendrick, Grady whispered, feeling his strength wane. It's all that matters now. Kendrick, Grady gasped into the walkie-talkie, blood bubbling on his lips. I'm going to bleed out sooner rather than later. Nothing can change that now. Grady, Jesus, hang on, I'm coming. Kendrick's voice crackled with panic. Save it, Grady rasped, knowing he wouldn't last long. The bullet in his gut felt like molten lead and blood was pooling beneath him, thick and hot. Even if he could somehow stop the bleeding, he'd never survive the bullet lodged inside him. Grady, you can't give up, Kendrick pleaded through the static. Survival, Kendrick, Grady whispered. It's all that matters now. As the zombies clawed at the car windows, Grady forced himself to focus. His eyes scanned the grocery store roof and caught the glint of a rifle scope. The shooter was still out there waiting for another shot. Grady instinctively ducked down in the seat, trying to make himself a smaller target. Find the food, Kendrick, he wheezed into the walkie-talkie. Promise me. I promise, Grady, Kendrick choked out, his voice thick with emotion. Just hold on. Too late for that. Grady muttered, feeling the end closing in. But as he got lower in the seat, he spotted a set of car keys on the floorboard. He picked them up, smiling grimly as he realized they belonged to the very vehicle he was in. Hey, Kendrick, Grady managed, feeling a last surge of adrenaline. Found some keys, going to make some noise. Grady, don't, Kendrick began, but Grady had already cut the transmission. Survival, he whispered, as he prepared for his final stand. Kendrick. Grady gasped into the walkie-talkie, fighting to keep his voice steady. 
There's food in that store. That's why the guy's guarding it. Grady, you can't be sure. Look at the situation, Grady snapped, his breath ragged. Why else would someone protect this place with their life? Trust me, I'll make sure he's not a problem for us. But what if there are others inside? Kendrick's voice wavered. Doesn't matter, Grady replied, determined. Survival of the fittest, right? We need that food, and if it's the last thing I do, I'm getting it for us. Grady, don't, Kendrick began, but Grady had already made up his mind. Ignoring Kendrick's protests, Grady sat up and inserted the key into the ignition. As the engine roared to life, he revved it furiously, challenging the unseen sniper. His heart pounded in his chest, his entire body tense. Come on, he whispered, gritting his teeth. Show yourself. The sharp crack of a gunshot rang out, and a bullet burst through the windshield, just inches from Grady's face. Shards of glass sprayed around him, glittering like deadly confetti. Grady flinched but kept his foot on the gas, adrenaline pumping through his veins. Missed me, he muttered, defiance flashing in his eyes. Your mistake. As the car sped toward the grocery store, Grady knew he was taking the ultimate risk. But in this new, brutal world, survival was all that mattered, and he would do whatever it took to ensure it. Grady slammed his foot down on the gas pedal, his heart pounding in his chest. The car surged forward, tires screeching as it tore across the parking lot. Zombies stumbled into its path, their bodies crunching beneath the wheels and spraying gore onto the windshield. Come on, come on, Grady muttered through gritted teeth, his knuckles white on the steering wheel. Bullets pierced the air around him, one slamming into his arm. Pain flared, but he kept the car steady, his eyes locked on the grocery store's front doors. The glass shattered on impact, the car plowing through with a deafening crash. It tore past the registers, coming to an abrupt halt amidst the wreckage. Gasping for breath, Grady surveyed the devastation, blood dripping from his arm onto the steering wheel. Did it, he whispered, and then caught sight of the shelves packed with food. Relief washed over him, even as more zombies began to pour in through the gaping hole he'd created. Kendrick, Grady panted into the walkie-talkie, struggling to keep his voice steady. I'm in. There's food, but I don't have much time. They're everywhere. Damn it, Grady, Kendrick's voice crackled through the speaker. Why'd you have to go and do that? You know me, always want to be the center of attention, Grady replied with his weak voice. The pain overwhelms Grady for a moment dropping the walkie to the car seat as the zombies flood into the building, surrounding the car. Some of them take interest in the still-breathing man behind the wheel, pressing their rotting flesh against the window. Gritting his teeth, Grady lifted the walkie-talkie with his trembling hand. Blood seeped through his fingers, spattering the device as he pressed the button to speak. Kendrick, he rasped. Got in, but zombies are everywhere. The shooter should be neutralized, but the group's gonna have to clear him out. Grady, just hold on, I'll come get you. Kendrick's voice trembled with urgency. Kendrick! Grady paused, swallowing hard. I don't have long. Bullet hit me good. Just take care of everyone, all right? Grady's voice broke as he said his final words to his friend. Grady, no, please. But Grady had already tossed the walkie-talkie aside, the device clattering onto the blood-soaked floor. Leaning back in the driver's seat, Grady stared out at the encroaching horde, their dead eyes and gnashing teeth, a stark reminder of the world he now inhabited. He wondered how life could have turned out this way, from dirt bikes and bar brawls to fighting for survival among these relentless monsters. A sudden calm washed over him, acceptance settling in like a thick fog. Grady knew his time was up, but even in the face of death, he couldn't help but feel a twisted sense of satisfaction. He had made a difference, given his friends a chance at survival. As the darkness enveloped him, Grady met the gaze of the nearest zombie, its decaying visage framed by the shattered windshield. With a final breath, Grady surrendered himself to the void, 